uh, good evening I'm back with more about Sif the Curious Life of Human Cadavers I'm at chapter 10, 11 and 12 and those are the last chapters chapter 10 um, the title Eat Me Medicinal Cannibalism and the Human Dumplings uh, She starts with uh, talking about the hundred years honey steeped uh, remains of the mellified man as a topic ointment that's used as a topic ointment and orally taken to cure certain diseases in Saudi Arabia as reported in the Chinese uh, in the Chinese Materia Medica by Li Shi Chan. The modified men recipe, recipe um, uh, is quoted that Saudi Arabian men um, who uh, volunteered, old people who volunteered their bodies for this purpose in their 70s and 80s. They ingested, they ingested only honey, nothing else but honey, and bathed in honey till they started excreting only honey and died within months. Their remains then lay in a stone coffin full of honey. The remains are to be deterred in 100 years. So the author says that she personally did not verify this fact, but it was reported in the Chinese uh, Materia Medica, some kind of um, uh, Chinese encyclopedia that deals with the herbal medicine. And um, the author then stated that Li did not verify the veracity of the of the mellified man, even the person who quoted that in, in uh, the Materia Medica did not verify whether it was true or not but he believed it was true fact since they in the, where they are they have seen things similar Lei Shishan also reported certain medicinal practices that involved the use of human dandruff old drumstick skin excrements of different animals for therapeutic purposes in the 16th century China. <coughs> Home brewed money elixirs using remains um, of humans were also reported to have happened in Libya and Egypt. The mummified bodies were those of desert Libyan travelers who were caught by sudden deaths, like in a sandstorm or something. They had to be healthy and um, in the complete strength and that death had to be sudden for for others to brew them and use them um, as elixirs. Nicola Lafever in his complete body of chemistry who is 17th century chemist and alchemist described the recipe of the brewed mum elixir. One to three grains he said of the mummy mixed with the viper's flesh and spirit of wine and you might also have heard certain recipes similar to those because I know for sure the, um, um, they are in every culture and um, so CGS Thompson who wrote the mystery of art or the apothecary in 1929 reported that crypts were raided for mummies and sold by Jewish people, by Jews, that's how they reported the Jews, they didn't say Jewish people, um, because that's how they were referred to back then. Uh, when the stock wore off, they sold uh, fake ones. Thompson was quoted to have said that the Jew eventually got revenge on his ancient oppressors. And this is a quotation from uh, C.J. Uh, S. Thompson. 1910, A.C. Wooten 
In his chronicles, a pharmacy reported that mummy elixirs were still used in France, quoting a French surgeon, uh, Ambrose uh, Père. The mummies were prepared um, from stolen bodies. The decayed human remains were indicated for multiple disorders that range from palsy to vertigo to blood coagulation to bruises, etc. Wooden's book was published in 1929. Liquefied placenta, spittles, human fat, woman butter, and book and, and uh, poor sinner's fat, human excrement from urine uh, to hard and liquid stool were mentioned as remedies that were used up to the 19th century in books uh, and chronicles uh, of pharmacopoeia. Gladiators' blood and the blood of guillotined people were collected by workers and executioners and sold for merits such as epilepsy, gout, and dropsy. Dragis in the Middle Ages sold menstrual blood for different remedies, spirits mixed with brains of men and herbs. Baths was used to dissolve earwax, toenails as emetics, water is sold as antidotes. Human feces uh, or animal dung uh, used to coax a prolapsed uterus back in place and human saliva for dog bites and eye infection. It has an antibiotic attributes. Example, you know, uh, such as snail slime now, leeches, frogs are used in modern times medicine. So these things were used back then, same way we viewed them with disdain and uh, they were, people used them either because it, accidentally it works for one or it's just uh, the placebo effect. CJS included the, a recipe for spirits with men's brain mixed with peony, black cherries, lavender and lily. Cannibal you know today, I guess. No scientific research methods were used to claim such remedies as legitimate one, but simple associations as I just talked about were that guided or what guided druggists of the time. The belief they were efficient was based on the fact of coincidence, people's immune responses and overall health, and also uh, that some acute disorders as self-limiting and resolved on their own. And let's not forget the placebo effect I talked about. The author then makes a very interesting comparison between those practices and some current modern practices such as bone marrow transplant or hormonal therapy. The author quoted the Bernard uh, E. Reed, uh, the editor, of the Chinese materia, America, who thought that we should expand our horizon beyond the aesthetic, since that was helped us discover and use animal insulin and adrenaline um, in our treatments. A statement that implied we are already using animal products as cure with great results, and the cures might also reside in us our own products. Some of these products are gotten from dead bodies. The author also quoted an artist who together with other classmates of anatomy who took the course as a requirement for their uh, uh, studies back then lived on cannibal diet. This is an extreme they bought freshly passed away young and non-diseased human cadavers and lived on them for two months and they claimed they noticed an improvement in their health. Any comments? So they were inspired in that because some other uh, person uh, fed his cats uh, the meat of other cats and he noticed that the, their fur improved. 
So they lived in um, human cadavers and uh, thought that improved their health. Human cadavers also contributed to blood dona donations. It started as an experiment in Russia on canines. The Skivorsky Institute pioneered the experiment on human cadavers in 1950s. Blood can retain its freshness, um, we are told, six to eight hours post-mortem. Corpses were placed in Trendelenburg, then um, position, then blood was drained uh, from the neck vessels. The drained blood was then transfused into live patients. The experiment was not used outside Russia except by Dr. Jack Kivokian, uh, who transfused corpses drained black blood into four living patients. Uh, it's a wiki story. I verified it. I looked at it. I found it like in wiki. Uh, without telling either the family or the dead, of the recipient or the recipient, he didn't tell anybody that the the blood was uh, was that of a dead. He didn't inform the recipients and he didn't inform the family of the dead that he was draining their, the blood of their uh, uh, dead ones and transfused it on in um, living uh, bodies. And the practices back then were different because nobody required uh, consent to do something on a patient, even when they are uh, invas invasive um, procedures such as blood transfusion. Um, what happened to compatibility, we don't know. Maybe by miracle, those people didn't die because they were compatible with that blood. I don't know. This guy um, went to jail later because he helped with the uh, um, assisted suicide. He campaigned for it and helped and uh, I was jailed for that. Then the author mentions the shocking truth that the placenta is still consumed by some women in postpartum as a cure for depression in Britain and America. Uh, in China it was used to relieve delirium. Also the placenta was consumed in China um, to relieve delirium weakness or loss of willpower and pink eye. Hmm. The source mentioned in the book um, was, a ch was again Chinese material as it is by Li Shi Chan. Uh, a British television presented a segment on a fried placenta on a cooking channel when complained, uh, complaints um, were raised against the TV channel. The reporter said that all the channel got was a slap on the wrist. What does that mean? Did they find them, ask for them for apology? I don't know. It was not um, explained in the book. Pregnancy website, a uh, website, um, the book also uh, states. Uh, have all kinds of placenta recipes, lasagna uh, recipe with placenta, pizza recipe with placenta, etc. The author met Ray Chong, the author of Cannibalism in China, to verify some of the facts included in Chinese Materia Medica. Chong introduced her to some family historical practices uh, Chinese resorted to since um, the 10th century to cure their own by feeding them pieces of their own flesh or partaking an organ fat uh, he included in an article. And if you remember any of those fairy tales your nanny or your grandma or your mom or father told you as kids, if uh, you grow up the same generation you grow, sometimes they told us those stories about those um, heroic people who cut pieces of their flesh and then fed it to their own so they wouldn't die uh, out of hunger. So this is this is similar to that. Also, it was out of heroism, out of wanting to save others. So they fed them uh, pieces of their own flesh. The author came across an article 
on the internet that was initially published by Hong Kong Daily Express and was published on the Daily Telegraph that claims that in in a state-owned hospital in uh, Shenzhen in Hong Kong, of course, aborted fetuses are sold uh, for others to make recipes after them, while staff members from um, that vary from clinicians to environmental staff habitually take human cadaver flesh home for food. This has been mentioned in the book by the author, who even traveled to Hanan region to investigate some of these cannibalism stories, uh, such as the one that uh, workers in a crematorium caught the buttocks of, uh, of clients, their clients, and uh, sold them uh, to uh, restaurants and even killed to do so. The author found out that selling fetuses and placentas have been declared illegal by uh, Shenzhen authorities, but the woman, um, uh, the author had to, f to fact check the story, an interpreter, found out that these products are now used in pharmacotherapy to cure problems of skin of the skin. So now they're using them as pills. Same time we sell uh, um, insulin is sold uh, that's gotten from horses or from pigs in addition to the synthetic one. Uh, will that day come will what is there a day Will a day come when we are going to take insulin from other humans and then inject it into other pe other uh, humans? It's possible. The author thought that people and their perception are culture bound. And that the Chinese are very practical. The Chinese take Thai bao pills which are made of aborted fetuses the same way they eat mice and dogs while Americans love dogs and of course do not eat them while they eat cow meat, a creature that's very venerated in India. So it's like it's cultural bond. Many Roach reports that there are those who argue that cannibalism has its place in a strictly rational society. Rivera, for example, the guy, um, um, the anatomy student, uh, student um, and she talks about wrote a manifesto like uh, in favor of cannibalism. She then acknowledged most cases of cannibalism in China at least were caused by starvation or hatred, like when somebody eats the organs of somebody out of hate or, or, or anger because they killed their own or something. So. Um, and I know stories like even from the Arab world, uh, um, and this is something that they taught us in school uh, uh, during the spread of Islam, early spread of Islam, uh, a woman whose brother was killed by uh, somebody uh, who is um, trying to, to, who is uh, from the opposite clan. Uh, she killed the guy and ripped his uh, um, cage, you know, and the uh, rib cage open and ate his liver. And that woman was uh, somebody uh, that's been still talked about and about and people wrote in and thought that was heroic, although it was, she was against somebody um, who was trying to, was fighting for Islam. So it's 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 a it's a cultural thing, you know. So there is also Shakespeare. Um, uh, if you remember, um, Titus Andronicus and how that woman, out of anger, fed her enemy his own children. So she, however, believes um, that uh, ingesting pills made of fetuses fetus is callous and disrespectful to the mother. Um, <laughs> um, it's presented in a kind of a civilized way with a, a certain aim uh, in a way it's other than like grabbing children uh, fetuses from trash 
and and uh, taking them home to eat them. So, but it's still, it's still, it's 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 a cultural thing, you know. Not that I advocate for any. So, <laughs> taste cannibalism, savage cannibalism. I would say she described as rare, but can still happen. She traveled to China. To and had an interpreter, as I said before, to investigate a story reported by Reuters, a venerated news agency in, the, in, um, in Asia, Europe, Middle East. And uh, the story was reported as published by local news about workers in a crematorium who sold pieces of corpses, uh, of corpses flesh to restaurants before they cremated them. Her efforts in investigating the news went dry. The newspaper that reported the news did not exist and the crematorium she thought might have been the one did not have any recollection of the event. So she didn't find any proof about that. Uh, the author then interviewed anthropologists about cannibalism, uh, both the ritualistic and war ones, but admitted that she more, was more interested in type of cannibalism where people eat their own dead. They don't kill them, but people who are dead and uh, they don't want to waste meat. So, taste cannibalism, rare, but does exist. And these are uh, for questions about chapter um, 10. Um, can a person eat another dead person out of practicality? That's a really big question. Uh, we have seen all those stories about people who nearly starved in less than 10 days when Chachi Snow started eating each other. We have seen and heard stories about uh, people who were um, in ships and uh, um, almost uh, you know uh, starved but then they ate uh, their, their own dead people so these are questions um, now let's move to chapter 11 before we can make our uh, opinions so and I think I'll, I will just talk about chapter 11 in another um, episode. My battery is running out. <laughs> it's giving me a sign. And if you have any questions, just pose them and let's uh, create the, the, the aura for the next episode. <laughs>